And I think you're all set. Okay, go for it. <clears throat> As a teacher, being able to recognize and capitalize a student's differing strengths and develop several strategies to support and create a safe learning environment can lead to improve the level of achievement in language learning. Hello everyone, my name is Gilbert Rodriguez and I am here to present my, uh, my topic, which is strategies to encourage motivation and engagement in a multicultural classroom. I am from Colombia and I am currently teaching in Austin College University. Okay, so let's get started. So these are my students and this is my classroom. And as you can see, um, I would like to talk about uh, the different cultural backgrounds I have in my classroom. I have the, uh, different uh, students from different countries and different nationalities. I have uh, students from Mexico, Honduras. I have uh, students from also America and El Salvador. So as you can see, they have different, different cultural backgrounds and they also have different proficiency levels. And some of them are native, some of them are, you know, beginner level, intermediate or advanced. So we have, yeah, different levels that we are working with in the same classroom, which we need to be aware of. And at the time that we are going to start teaching them. So I have students that um, are also uh, coming for, from different contexts, so it's very important to acknowledge that they have different ways to perceive in life and also have created different perspectives among their lives and also their own experiences because the things they have experienced in life are not the same that I have experienced in life. So it's, it's, it's important to recognize that they are uh, different persons that I am and they will also have different ideas from the ones I have developed in my life. Um, Along with these characteristics and, and backgrounds, the students have different learning strategies and intelligences. So those can contribute to the understanding of the multiple ways someone can approach learning. Because you're not going to encounter students that are, you know, only related or only, you know, encouraged to learn with visual aids or, you know, uh, from listening, but they can have different ways of learning so they can develop different strategies to learn in order to, you know, copy with the teaching that they're receiving in the classroom. So that's about them. And now I'm going to pose some questions. So how many of you have students that are afraid to speak in class? Can you raise your hands? There you go, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of people here. And how many of you know your student's name and use them in class? Okay, that's a good number, excellent. So, to talk about this, um, whenever you are approaching a classroom, it's very important to acknowledge your students. So you have to acknowledge that there are different people, that they have different names. So it's very important to refer to them with their names so they can feel that they are in a place where they are recognized and seen as a person. So these are the personal barriers that I personally have faced in the classroom. I hope some of you can relate to this and to think that I am not alone in this, in this, in this world. And so <laughs> some students lacking the trust or confidence to speak in the target language. And some students negative past experiences when learning the language. This is a very common one. Students do not feel trust with the teacher anymore because you know, in the past, probably a teacher didn't make them feel um, supported or feel um, secure in the language classroom. So the teachers didn't create a safe space for them to learn. So they are not encouraged or they don't want to, you know, expose themselves to a classroom where they are not, you know, feeling okay with. Um, some students feeling intimidated or insecure by students with a higher level. So this is a problem that I currently have in my classroom. I have students that are native. So as you may know, or as you may think, um, students might feel um, negative emotions when it comes to participating in the classroom. So they don't feel as motivated as native speakers will feel because they don't feel that they have the proficiency level to do it. So it's very important to acknowledge those students that do not feel secure in the classroom to give them the opportunity to improve this ability to speak and also to, you know, to apart or to, you know, contribute to discussion in the classroom as they are different level uh, students and different proficiency. So it's very important to acknowledge that we are in a classroom where other students are going to have more opportunities than, you know, beginner ones. Um, lack of relationships between the students, making them feel less comfortable in groups. Some students may not know each other, some students know each other and they might stick with each other 
in order not to feel, you know, discouraged or not to feel uncomfortable in the classroom. And the relationships built in the classroom are very important because these are the way that you are going to help them achieve learning. So just to take that into account. I'm gonna address all of this, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the solutions. Um, a student's lack of motivation to learn the language. As we know, this is, I think, the most um, important problem. Um, there is a, a lot of the students who are just there to, you know, for the credit, and they're like, oh yeah, I need this, so this is the easiest way. And so another problem that I have encountered with my native speaker students is that they are just there because they need the credit, because they already know the language, you know? So they are just like, oh yeah, I just go to this class, but, you know, I'm not really worrying about it. So, yeah. We'll, we'll address that. Okay, so I have my first step here, and it's creating a safe space for students to build a sense of confidence and trust. So I'm going to focus on the effective approach on how to, you know, face a multicultural classroom from an, an effective perspective. So the first step, creating a safe space. Um, helping students perceive, perceive the classroom as a safe space where they can feel confident and secure is the best way to facilitate and build learning. If students feel safe, they will produce and contribute to classroom activities. They will participate and learn because now the classroom is a place to share, laugh and learn at the same time. So. The first thing that you're gonna make sure to do, you're gonna make sure that you let your students know everything they share in the classroom is valid and recognized. When they feel like their ideas are going to be listened and they are not going to be judged about them, that's the way you can let or guide your students to participate a little bit more. So that's what I try to do in all my classes. I just say like, okay guys, this is what we're gonna do today. Just uh, don't feel ashamed of anything you're thinking. Just feel free to express whatever you're thinking. Feel free to discuss whatever you, you want to discuss and feel free to express what you want to express. So your, percep so your perceptions are valid in my classroom and I'm not gonna take them for granted. The second thing is help students find a way to easily share the ideas in the classroom, topics that a student can relate to. If your students can relate to the topics you are teaching in the classroom, they can feel comfortable when, while sharing them. So it's very important to give them topics or give them ideas. They can be, you know, they say like, oh yeah, I have experienced this. Oh, oh yeah, I've gone through this. So that they can be or feel more comfortable when, you know, expressing what they think. Provide activities where students stop thinking about learning, where they can feel that they're just having fun when in reality they are learning, but you know, they don't know that they are learning at the moment they are doing it. So for example, I have here an example of an activity I did, and this is related to food. So this is how I approach food in my classroom. And this is an activity that I developed in order for students to have fun while doing the activity, but they are learning about it. So um, I, I'm asking them a question. I'll show you the, the video in a second. I'm asking them a question and I'll tell them, okay, what are the ingredients that you can find in Sancocho? Sancocho is a typical food from Colombia that I love and I miss with all my heart. And you, you'll see how they are engaging the activity and they're all, you know, uh, like motivated and they're all participating and having so much fun. And currently I'm developing my research project and this is one of my students' excerpts, so I'm gonna read it real quick. This class has definitely made me gain confidence in my Spanish language skills. Learning Spanish in a classroom environment almost inherently comes with negative feelings of anxiety and makes you question yourself. On the other hand, this class has done a very good job of facilitating a trusting learning environment that builds, up, builds everybody, everyone up, regardless of their profic proficiency. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna watch the video. De la bandera país. Okay, so there you can see how motivated these students are to participate in the activity. All of them are involved, all of them are cheering everybody up, they have teams, they are, you know, leading each other to have the answer and being, you know, motivated to game points and everything. Here, they are just having fun and they are learning because that's what I want them to do. I want them to learn about the food from Colombia and they are doing it, but they are having fun, so they are not even realizing it, right? And that, that's what we want. That's, that's her goal. 
Okay, now we're going to our second step, and this is the approach to error correction. And this is the most important thing for a teacher to do in the classroom. Allow students to make mistakes. Please allow them to make mistakes. I know that this is not related to all languages. There are a lot of languages where if you can change a word, it changes everything. But like, I mean, in Spanish, the most important thing is to get the message. So please focus on letting the students participate in the classroom. So give examples. When you're talking and, and someone, for example, corrects a thing that you're saying, for example, in English, that is my second language, well, what happened? Like, I'm like, oh, what was my idea? What, 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 what was I gonna say? You know, because that cuts the confidence on, and, the, and the trust you have in that moment to speak and share the ideas that you have in your brain. So interrupting the students to correct them is the worst way to get them to learn and understand the content. Error correction should not be approached aggressively. This could lead to distrust, embarrassment, and shyness in the classroom. The goal of language must be focused on effective communication rather than perfect use of the language or the grammar structures. So please keep that in mind. Please do not correct your students when they, whenever they are talking or sharing an idea. Finally, they are sharing an idea, just please let them finish. If you wanna correct them at the end or if you wanna share the structure of the language at the end, do, them, do, do that, but you know, wait for them to finish. Because if, for example, I'm saying, um, the food in Colombia, it's really um, good. And then in the Ukraine, did you say like, no, the food in Colombia is really good. But then you, yeah, you have definitely changed my perspective. You have definitely changed the way I, I wanna, you know, share my ideas. So it's, it's not a good thing to do. So please allow your students to make mistakes. So this is an excerpt from, my, from one of my students as well. The classroom community has kept me more engaged than I expected, and I believe this is in large part due to the importance that it is placed on fostering a respectful and understanding environment where nobody has to feel bad or unsure of their Spanish skills. The range of skills includes students who are native and students who are very much beginners, but the class remains inclusive to all. Third step, using the third good language as much as possible. Please lead your students to talk in the target language that you want them to talk. This is the most important thing, because sometimes as teachers, we do not feel we are being, we're being listened. So sometimes we are like, oh yeah, I want them to, you know, to understand this. So I'm gonna say it in English, because that that's the language they, they understand. But this is a mistake we usually do in the classroom, because that will lead like that will let the students think that we are just, you know, providing them with the easiest way out. And this is not what I, what I personally want my students to think, because I want them to, you know, make an effort to understand what I'm trying to say, and of course, engage in the conversation that I'm trying to have with them. So it's very important for you guys and for me as a teacher to recognize the importance of the target language in the classroom, because that way students will be encouraged to understand what I'm saying and not just be there and, you know, oh, at the end of the day, he's gonna say it in English, so I'm not gonna pay attention to what he's saying right now. That's not what we want. So, um, let the students make mistakes, but encourage them to use the language. Provide them with activities where they can feel secure to participate and engage in conversation. Okay, step number four. Number four. This is a very important step that I want you guys to be, please be, be mindful about it. And it's learning and using their names, being aware of any gender or sexuality related issues. It is important to make each student feel seen by their identity, whether it be as basic as their first name and as deep as their gender identity. It is crucial to make students feel significant by who they are as a person. So how many of you have students that identify themselves with, you know, different pronouns in the classroom? Okay. So it is important or do, to recognize that there are students that are different, that they're, you know, that they re, like identify themselves with different pronouns or not just the standard ones that we might consider to be their pronouns. So it's very important to ask these questions and to please, uh, you know, set the ground to, to make the classroom a respectful place. Okay, now an important one and one that I like a lot and it's collaborative work in the classroom. So when students have low confidence, it is really difficult for them to produce output, as we know already, right? So developing different strategies like teamwork is a good strategy to improve participation and encourage students.
Learning is always going to be embarrassing. So why not, as a teacher, embarrass yourself first? This is, this is my philosophy. This is what I like to do in my classroom, and it has worked. So I set the ground. I always set the ground. If I have to sing, I'll sing. I don't sing as well as the, the, the presenters that, you know, you, 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 you heard her, right? I'm not like that. But if I have to sing, I sing. If I have to dance, I dance. If I have to do anything, I'll do it. Because learning is always going to be embarrassing. So you should do it yourself. Take the lead, learning is embarrassing, and as a teacher, you should help your students feel comfortable. Per strategically, low proficiency with high proficiency students, that is a good strategy that personally, it has worked. Explore or ask a student interest. Use service, use you know. Listen to your students in the classroom. Do one, do uh, tutoring sessions, do one-on-one. -on -one. That will help you recognize your students and understand what they are thinking. So that way, you could help them improve their learning ability. Here, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna show you how I dance. So this is this is a, a Halloween contest that we did in in my university, and yeah, this is how I encourage my students. I was not expecting my student to dance with me, but at the end of you, you're gonna see. So yeah, that's me. That's my student. You say, put them on your head. I'm your mother. Make me un poco loco. And we won. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's another way that you can encourage your students, please don't feel embarrassed. We've, we've, all, through, we've all been through learning and it's, it's the best way to approach it. Like, yeah, you know, you're there already, so might as well do it well, right? And this is, this is another video. We were talking about sellers, uh, street sellers in Colombia, and I encourage them to record a video. I receive a lot of videos. I don't have much time, so I'm just gonna show you one. And uh, street sellers in Colombia are very important for us. I'm from with them, and they're you know recognized as uh, valuable members of society. So uh, it was very nice to see my students you know, portray this reality that we have in Colombia. Ah, perfecto. Aquí está, mi hijo. That's the name of my student. And yeah, that's it about it, guys. That was so great. Thank you so much. And I think we have time for one question. So who's got a question? Uh, thank you for your presentation. Alrighty. That was really interesting, really fun to watch, I think, for everyone. Um, I mostly had a question about the part about like having students from a different gender identity or things like that, because I teach French, and one issue I have is in French we don't really have a neutral, not officially, and even for, since this is one of my one-on-one -on -one students, having to teach something not official that would add more difficulty, I found it a bit hard to find a compromise, so usually I would ask that student to like, like the only thing I found to do was ask them to pick one for the exam so that I know like how to correct. I don't know if you would have any suggestions of ways to deal with things like that. Mm, I mean, I, I feel like this must not be a problem um, whenever you're in the classroom. So I feel like this is more whenever you are, you know, talking to them so that they feel seen, that they feel respected in the classroom. So that's that's the only way I will approach it. You know, we still have to teach these kind of things like, you know, pronounce and everything. So just do it like in a respectful way so that you are also aware of it in English because you, you're scared of going, like, you know, bumping to each other. So just, you know, make sure that whenever you like, 
you know, ask them who, like, how, how are they? So if they identify with they, like, just, you know, be mindful of that. But apart from that, like, we, we still have to teach the content, right? So, yeah. Yeah, if there is like a way, for example, in Spanish, there is a way to refer, you know, there's there's different pronouns. So that's that's the way I, I do it. So I do, I do refer to those and I do, you know, I make sure that all of them are recognized and they can learn them because there are a lot of people like, you know, in, in Latin America that also identify with them, but yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's continue those important conversations.